Welcome to IAS project. In this video, we will be talking about Upper Paleolithic Age. First, let's test your knowledge with this practice question. The question is, with reference to Stone Age in India, cave paintings started in which period? Four options have been given. Lower Paleolithic Age, Upper Paleolithic Age, Mesolithic Age or Neolithic Age. If you know the answer to this question, please comment below this video. This is a very easy question. You will learn about the answer in this video anyway. So, in our previous videos, we have talked about prehistoric period, Stone Age and Paleolithic Age. We have divided Paleolithic Age into three parts and we have learned about the first two parts that is Lower Paleolithic Age and Middle Paleolithic Age. Now, let's learn about Upper Paleolithic Age. So, we have divided Paleolithic Age into three phases that is Lower Paleolithic Age, Middle Paleolithic Age and Upper Paleolithic Age. This division is mainly based on the type of stone tools used during these three periods and the nature of climate change that happened from one period to another. So, the Lower Paleolithic Age was the first part of Paleolithic Age. That means it was the oldest part of Paleolithic Age. After Lower Paleolithic Age, we had Middle Paleolithic Age, which was the shortest part of Paleolithic Age. Middle Paleolithic Age was mainly seen as a transitional phase from Lower Paleolithic Age to Upper Paleolithic Age. If we look at the Upper Paleolithic Age, it started somewhere around 40,000 years ago and it lasted up to 12,000 years ago. So roughly 28,000 or let's say 30,000 years of time was the time period of Upper Paleolithic Age. So Upper Paleolithic Age was roughly from 40,000 years ago to 10,000 BCE. BCE means before Common Era. 10,000 BCE is nothing but 12,000 years ago. So this means that the Upper Paleolithic Age is the most recent part of the Paleolithic Age. What is the oldest part of the Paleolithic Age? It is nothing but the Lower Paleolithic Age. You can remember this by using the trick of mound. We have already learned about mound. In mound what happens is whatever the upper layers are there, the archaeological remains that are found in the upper layers are very new. So upper means new. And whatever are the archaeological remains that are found in the lowermost layers, they are old. So lower means old. So the trick is that lower Paleolithic age is the oldest Paleolithic age and the upper Paleolithic age is the newest Paleolithic age. This is the trick by which you can remember the order of lower, middle and upper Paleolithic ages. If we look at the climate that was during the upper Paleolithic age, it was basically the last phase of ice age. We know that Paleolithic age coincided mostly with Pleistocene epoch and Pleistocene epoch is also called as Great Ice Age. So during the Paleolithic Age, it was mostly the Ice Age that was going on. But by the end of the Paleolithic Age, that is during the Upper Paleolithic Age, it was basically the last phase of Ice Age. When Upper Paleolithic ended, Ice Age also ended. So there were some changes that were happening in the climate during the end period of Upper Paleolithic Age. Let's look at what were the changes that were happening in the climate and in the environment at the end of Upper Paleolithic Age. The first change was that Ice Age ended, so climate became warmer and drier. Warmer means temperature has increased. Drier means rainfall has decreased. So previously the temperature was like freezing, but now temperature became warmer and ice started to melt. So because of this, grasslands developed in many regions of the world. So within the grasslands, there were some grasses which were naturally occurring, which had food grains. Such kind of grasses are called as cereals. What are cereals? Cereals are nothing but food grain bearing grasses. For example, rice, wheat, barley, corn or maize or oats. All these are nothing but cereals. So when grasslands developed, 
some of the grasses were cereals also such kind of cereals proliferated that means they started to grow more and more in many places obviously when these grasslands developed animals that depended on eating these grass which are nothing but herbivores which means grass eating animals like deer buffalo wild cattle all the population of these animals also increased now what happened was humans learned something there were some animals which were not very aggressive for example some buffaloes and some wild cattle were not very aggressive at the end of the upper paleolithic age people began to realize that such kind of animals can be domesticated well they did not domesticate immediately and domestication is something which happened over a long period of time however the idea came to them that some animals can be domesticated so once the upper paleolithic ended the next stage was nothing but mesolithic age during the mesolithic age a very primitive form of domestication of animals as well as domestication of plants that is cultivation of plants began so we can say that in the upper paleolithic age it was basically the last phase of ice age when the last phase of ice age ended with the upper paleolithic period the next stage was mesolithic age in the mesolithic age a new type of climate existed what was the new type of climate warm temperatures and less rainfall which is also called as warm and dry type of climate so this is basically about the climate change that happened during upper paleolithic age so upper paleolithic age is separated from middle paleolithic age and lower paleolithic age in terms of the climate change and what was the climate change the climate change was basically the last phase of ice age was there in upper paleolithic age we have divided paleolithic age into lower middle and upper based on two factors the first factor was climate change the second factor was tools we have just seen how climate change was a factor in upper paleolithic age separation now let's see how were the tools different in upper paleolithic age the most important development that happened during upper paleolithic age in terms of tools was new flint industries emerged new flint industries means places and people who made flint stone tools flint basically is a type of sedimentary stone we will discuss about flint in a few minutes so during the upper paleolithic age new flint industries emerged that means people were now making stone tools using flint stone flint stone was not used to make stone tools during the lower paleolithic or even middle paleolithic so this is a new development that happened therefore it becomes important for our prelims exam also so what were the stone tools that were made during this period basically parallel sided blades and burins were made we already know what blade is and burin is if you don't know please refer to our previous video the link is given here we have discussed in that video that in middle paleolithic age whatever the blades were made were only sharp on one side that means only on this side the blade was sharp but now the blades were sharp on both sides as well as the burins were sharp on both sides so on the both sides the blades were sharp this is an important development that happened in upper paleolithic age another important development that happened during upper paleolithic age was now bone tools were also used so if there is a prelims question which of the below developments happened during upper paleolithic age in terms of tools then the correct answers would be new flint tools started to be used parallel sided blades and burins started to be used as well as bone tools started to be used during upper paleolithic age please look here bone tools started to be used by the end of upper paleolithic age so in the beginning they were not used also it is widely believed by many archaeologists that the modern humans that is homo sapiens came to india during this period before this period many scientists believe that homo sapiens were not existing in india homo erectus or neanderthals were there 
However, there are some recent excavations and recent scientific discoveries which disprove this. So let's quickly look into what is the case here. Generally speaking, the scientific community regarding Homo sapiens in India is divided into two groups. Okay, the first group thinks that Homo sapiens came to India in Upper Paleolithic age. Okay, and the second group thinks that they came before Upper Paleolithic age. As of now, this is the most widely accepted view, which is that Homo sapiens came to India not more than 40 or 50,000 years ago. But new evidences have suggested that they might have come to India even before Upper Paleolithic age. For example, there were some excavations which were made in Jwalapuram village, which is actually in Andhra Pradesh. There, we have found evidence that Homo sapiens lived almost 80,000 years ago. If we talk about 80,000 years ago, one very major geological event happened during this time. This is very important from the point of view of geography and environment. What happened was, during 72,000 BCE, basically in Sumatra Island, which is in Indonesia, there was a volcano called as Toba. It is basically a super volcano. Super volcano means it was not a small volcano, but it was a huge volcano that happened. Okay. And because of the eruption of Toba super volcano, what happened was, you know, when any volcano erupts, there is so much of ash and pyroclastic materials that go into the air. And because this volcano was not on a small scale, it is basically a super volcano, right? So what happened was, so much ash and smoke and all these pyroclastic materials came out, they covered almost the entire earth. Okay. Now, once the ash settled onto the ground, what happened was, this layer of ash became a permanent part of land profile. I hope you understand this. Even today, if we start digging at many places, what we find is, after some depth, we have a particular layer of rock which was made because of the Toba volcano ash. We know the timeline of Toba volcano that is around 70,000 BCE. So, for example, if there is any archaeologist, he is digging and he finds any archaeological remains here. It means that these archaeological remains happened after Toba volcano. But if there is any archaeological remains below the to Toba volcanic ash, then it means that those archaeological remains belonged to a time period much before 72,000 BC. What happened in Jwalapuram village was, we have found evidences of Homo sapiens even below Toba volcanic ash layer. So that is why the new research suggests that Homo sapiens existed in India as before as 80,000 years ago, which means much before Upper Paleolithic age. In fact, this timeline belongs to Lower Paleolithic age. So I hope you understood what is happening here. The first group of scientists and archaeologists, they believe that evidences are found above Toba volcanic ash only. But the new scientists who discovered evidences of Homo sapiens below Toba volcanic ash layer in India, they have clearly stated that Homo sapiens existed in India even before 72,000 BCE. This is a very major development. I hope you understand the importance. So this was all about Toba super volcano, which erupted in 72,000 BC. Where was it located? It was located in Indonesia, particularly on Sumatra Island. If we talk a little bit more geography knowledge about Toba super volcano, what happened was when Toba super volcano erupted, it erupted on such a large scale that once it erupted, Whatever the magma chamber was there beneath this volcano, this is basically magma chamber, okay? What is the difference between magma and lava? When it is inside the earth, it is called as magma. When it comes out onto the surface, it is called as lava. So, the huge scale on which the Toba super volcano erupted, what happened was the magma chamber emptied so quickly so, all the mountain area or whatever the area that was there above the earth, it collapsed into the earth, into the empty magma chamber. Okay. Once it collapsed, what happened was 
now there was a depression area formed here okay this is the surface previously there was volcano here once the magma chamber emptied from here what happened was all the remaining material which was there on the surface it fell into the magma chamber so now a depression has formed okay year by year whenever there was rainfall rainfall water accumulated over here now this region has become a lake all right when a volcano collapses into the magma chamber it is called as a caldera this is a geography term you must have studied in geography if you have not then your preparation is not going on very well my friend this concept is clearly given in gc leong book so when the rainwater accumulated in the caldera the lake will be called as caldera lake all this is geography knowledge okay so we were talking about how new flint industries emerged in upper paleolithic age what is flint exactly flint is nothing but a sedimentary rock particularly if you want to say it is a crypto crystalline form of mineral quartz okay we know we have quartz if quartz sandstone undergoes metamorphosis it becomes quartzite quartzite was basically a metamorphic rock quartz if it undergoes sedimentation for example in lakes what happens is we get flint flint is basically a sedimentary rock sedimentary rocks basically have layers so both quartzite and flint come from quartz but quartzite is a metamorphic rock and flint is a sedimentary rock flint is usually categorized as a variety of chert chert is also basically a sedimentary rock chert material was very important to harappans because they made stone weights using chert they also made some seals as well as spindle walls using chert we will talk about chert when we discuss harappan civilization so where do we get flint flint nodules are usually found near river banks generally flint occurs as nodules and masses inside other sedimentary rocks like chalk and limestone both of these are sedimentary rocks and both of these are easily soluble in water so what happens is you have flint here and around flint you have limestone or chalk so when there is a river water is going by like this what happens is the limestone and chalk gets dissolved into the water and gets carried away and the flint nodule is left behind so people in the upper paleolithic age they took these flint nodules and they made stones out of this you can see image of flint over here look how sharp it is here and here and here therefore it is very much useful to make stone tools flint breaks into sharp edged pieces therefore it is very suitable for making knife blades and any other cutting tools flint was also used to make fire because when you used to hit two flint stones together sparks used to come they did not have any match sticks or gas lighters this was how they made fire back in paleolithic age so flint stones were also very important from the point of view of making fire flint basically has a glassy appearance so it has a polished surface okay one another important development that happened during upper paleolithic age was the invention of paintings on cave walls so basically paintings on cave walls and cave shelters started during upper paleolithic age so i gave this question to you in the beginning of the lecture the answer would be upper paleolithic age even in india we have bimbetka paintings where the oldest paintings belong to upper paleolithic age but in bimbetka we must remember that most paintings are from mesolithic age the question is asking when did cave paintings start so the answer obviously would be upper paleolithic age this question is easy now correct i hope so if we look at the example some paintings some cave paintings in bimbetka are as old as 30000 years old which means they fall into the timeline of upper paleolithic age okay well these people painted but what did they paint exactly they painted human figures and other human or social activities like hunting and dancing they also made paintings of let's say gathering food gathering honey and all these also 
they also painted geometric patterns and geometric designs like straight lines, wavy lines, circle, all these. These are nothing but geometric designs. But most of the paintings or most of the representations in the paintings were linear representations. And colors used generally were green and dark red. How did they get these colors? Dark red mainly came from ochre, which is nothing but an iron ore. Okay. In Hindi, I think it is called Geru. Green also came from another mineral and stone like, I think, Chalcedony. So, apart from hunting, dancing, human activities and geometric designs, these people also made animal figures. For example, bison, which is basically like a buffalo, elephant, rhino, boar and other animals. This point is very important from the point of your prelims exam. Human figures were drawn like stick-like figures. Which means like this, not full figures like we draw today. Human figures were represented as stick-like figures. Also, we have seen geometric patterns were drawn. For example, straight lines, wavy lines, circles, dots and all these. Although these paintings started to be drawn during the Upper Paleolithic age, there are relatively less number of paintings belonging to Upper Paleolithic age. Most of the paintings generally belong to Mesolithic age. This is true not only for the case of India, but everywhere in the world. We have many paintings from let's say Indonesia, Spain and other areas where those were drawn in Upper Paleolithic age. But many paintings were actually drawn in Mesolithic age. Let's look at some of the important Upper Paleolithic period sites. The first one is Bhimbetka. Bhimbetka is basically an all-rounder site for Stone Age. It has Lower Paleolithic, Middle Paleolithic, Upper Paleolithic, Mesolithic as well as Neolithic. Then we have Belan Valley which is in Uttar Pradesh very close to Prayagraj. Belan Valley also has Upper, Middle and Lower Paleolithic sites. Then we have Son Valley. Son River mainly flows in Madhya Pradesh, Uttar Pradesh and Jharkhand. Son River is a tributary of Ganga. Okay, it joins Ganga just before uh, Patna. Okay, this is let's say Patna and uh, this is Ganga River. Son River joins somewhere like this. It is basically a right bank tributary of Ganga. So in Son Valley also we have Upper Paleolithic sites. Then we have Chota Nagpur Plateau which is basically in Jharkhand. Also Eastern Ghats of Andhra Pradesh and Odisha. Then we have Dunes of Gujarat. What is dune? Dune basically is a sand dune. You must have seen in desert, you know, heaps of sand are there, like wavy sand. This is basically dune. So therefore, Upper Paleolithic sites were also found in desert regions. This is a fact you have to remember. And the last example given here is Muchatla Chintamanu Gavi. Gavi is basically named for cave in Telugu language. So, Muchetla Chintaman, which is located in Karnul district of Andhra Pradesh, is also an example of Upper Paleolithic site. Okay, if we talk about Muchetla Chintaman Gavi, this was a very recent discovery. Okay, so you may not find this example in many old books. Muchetla Chintaman Gavi is also within the Belam Cave complex. We will learn more about Belam Caves when we discuss Buddhism and Jainism. If you want to download this presentation, practice questions, class notes and other study material, go to our telegram channel which is IAS project. Also you can watch this video in Hindi. Just go to our Hindi channel that is IAS project Hindi on YouTube. The links for both these channels are given in the description below. Please like and subscribe. Thank you.